Hello. 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 Well, welcome. You're welcome. 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 Hello and welcome to our online worship service. My name is Becky and I am the CAP and Community Worker for the Parish of Herne Hill. Thank you so much for joining us today for the online worship service. We will be continuing our series uh, from the Book of Ruth in the Old Testament. Our lovely Auden and Winnie will be speaking to us a bit later about this. So let's begin our service today with a prayer reminding us why we are coming together. We are worshipping together wherever we are as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. We will now sing our first hymn, Christ Alone, My Cornerstone. When he shall come with 
As we enter our time of confession, we use this time to reflect on our relationship with God, on the, the failings of our hearts and our behaviour, perhaps today, last week or many years ago. What are the stories that we think that we need to say, the action or thought or word or deed we need to change? Let us confess to Almighty God our failures and accept his love and share it with others. And so we confess. Please join me in the words on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Today's Bible reading is Ruth 3. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you'll be, looked, where you'll be well provided for. Now, Boaz, with those women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, Good, let him redeem you. 
but if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised, and he said, No one knows that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, Bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her 17 and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember the first time as a teenager that I thought I had found love in this young man. I thought I had arrived. And then I found myself having nightmares in just a year because he didn't want to date me anymore. My heart was broken. Not just that, but also felt like my world was coming to an end. Not until I found my true love in Christ, my kinsman redeemer. In 2009, at the right time, at the right place, that I realized that I had been looking for love in all the wrong places and wrong things. With this experience, I agree with St. Augustine's prayer, Lord, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. God is the source of all good things. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And as I share the Word, which is good news, with your people, who are your church, may my voice decrease for yours to increase. Amen. If you are like me, by now you would have broken your New Year resolution. For the past few years, I have failed so miserably at being a vegan, training a couch to 5K, Saturday morning walks, and using the yearly planner to organize my calendar so I don't double book myself or miss any important dates. And yet, I find myself double booking most of the time. By the second or third week of the new year, it all started going wrong already. I have been asking myself time and time again, what is the answer and how do I overcome this obstacle? Is it possible that maybe you are also looking for answers to the same questions or something similar to this question? In our reading today, let us see what Jesus offers us. Over the past few weeks, we have been looking at the story of Ruth and Boaz found in the Old Testament book of Ruth. One of my favorite books. Because it is a story of redemption, loyalty, commitment, courage, risk-taking, providence, and faithfulness. The Bible tell the story of people and it is also interested in the greater story and the story is God in the life of people. How does Ruth chapter 3 fit into the large biblical story and point towards Jesus and the gospel, which is the good news? Let us look at these three points in details.
This love story is about God's love for people. The incarnation of God is to create the best love story ever told on this earth. As Jesus said in John Gospel, I come so you will have life in abundance. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is God's story, and it's a good story. God is inviting us into a relationship with him at no cost at all. Let's look at the biblical storyline of Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3 is a pivotal point in the book where Naomi courageously initiated a plan for faithful Ruth's future marriage to Boaz. This moved the story towards the fuller redemption and blessing of Naomi, Ruth, and Israel, which you will hear more about next week. As a book, Ruth demonstrates God's divine workings to pre preserve his chosen people, even when the odd seems impossible. Pointing to the gospel, the idea of a family protector redeeming and restoring outcast widows indicates Jesus as a kinsman redeemer for humanity. Boyer's gracious extension of favor and protection to marginalize Ruth illustrates Christ's mercy to make vulnerable sinners his bride through the new covenant. Just as Boyas took the costly invitation to do the part of a redeemer, Christ initiated salvation at a greater personal cost. So one may ask, so who is a kinsman redeemer or guardian redeemer? In our NIV Bible, the meaning of a kinsman redeemer or a guardian redeemer is a legal term for one who has obligation to redeem a relative in serious difficulties. This can be found more extensively in Leviticus chapter 25. The kinsman redeemer in Leviticus 25 was a close male relative protector and provider for a destitute family member according to God's law, which Jesus spiritually fulfilled through the gospel. Jesus became our redeemer by taking on human flesh and becoming our relative. As God incarnate, he was able to pay the price for our redemption. Jesus, the fulfillment of, a, of the kinsman redeemer concept, providing for our earthly redemption beyond what the Leviticus law illustrates in redemption through a relative, restored earthly and physical things, land, freedom and enslavement and economic relief. What was illustrated in human terms through the Leviticus law points to the earthly and cosmic redemption accomplished by Jesus for our salvation and redemption on, on a whole new level. Cosmic redemption refers to the comprehensive scope or a range of universal impact of salvation and restoration brought about by Jesus Christ's love. Death on the cross and resurrection. Some of these key aspects of the cosmic redemption accomplished by Jesus can be found in the book of Colossians. I love how Paul refers to God's redemption through Christ dismearing evil spirit powers and authorities that stood against humanity. In Colossians 2, 15, in context, when we were dead in our sins and in the uncircumcision of our flesh, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having counseled and charged our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken away, kneeling it to the cross. 
and having dismayed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. When we refer to the passage we read earlier on in verse 7 downwards, and this is what he says. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirit, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle, in the middle of the night, something startled him. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread a corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The act of lying at his feet under the corner of his garment was a cultural symbolic way of asking for marriage and the signal Ruth willingness for Boyas to spare his garment over her in agreement. The act of lying at his feet under the corner of his garment was a cultural symbolic way of Ruth asking marriage from Boyas and Boyas willingness to spread his garment over her in agreement. It was a marriage proposal through action rather than words. Ruth was courageous, placing herself in a vulnerable position, trusting that Boyas will respond honorably. Ruth's actions, though risky, ultimately allowed Boyas to fulfill his kinsman redeemer role and married Ruth. This led to them having a son, Obed, who became the grandfather of King David. And if you haven't listened to the talk last week, may I encourage you to do that. And next week you hear more about this story as well. The book of Ruth is made up of 85 verses, yet Kinsman Redeemer appears 23 times. Let us see how this story continues to point us to Jesus. As a godly, compassionate kinsman redeemer who sacrifices for destitute, desperate needs, Boyas become Christ's figure in Ruth's story. His mercy towards Ruth, both proposal gives her life, security, and purpose. Just as Christ's mercy towards those who humbly petition him, for salvation, grant eternal life and purpose. Boyas' integrity also points towards Christ's perfect faithfulness to fulfill God's promises. Let me share with you a personal testimony. The protection and provision for two vulnerable widows is something that I am very familiar with. My maternal grandmother, Elizabeth, who is still alive, and her senior sister Beatrice, who passed away two decades ago in their 30s, found themselves in a similar situation just like Ruth and Naomi, becoming widows for the second time for my grandmother with six young children, decided to move back home. Beatrice who had already adopted one of Elizabeth's children, decided to go back with her sister to build a life for themselves and to help her raise her children and build a family together for themselves. One can only imagine the stigma and the pain they would have carried with them at that time. My grandmother knew the journey was not going to be easy or smooth, so she turned to the feet of Christ she took a posture of surrender, worship, and prayers. Just as it is written in Philippians 4.13, I, 
I can do everything through him who gives me strength. She knew and still does know that the Lord is her only helper. I stand here today because of women like her. She built a house of prayers and the fourth generation of women after her is still and are still continuing to pray. I don't know about you, but last year was a very difficult year in many shapes and forms for a lot of people, including myself. We are just three weeks into the new year and already some people are stepping into challenges, difficult times. The news is no comfort either. I have just come back from my first residential weekend of the year. Four more to go and 10 essays to write before the end of the academic year in June. And I am asking myself, is it too late to make a new year resolution? In my response to the above question, I was reminded of a hymn in the, Pres in the Presbyterian hymnary, verse 647, and it goes like this. It is Jesus alone with whom I embark my journey. I daily interact with him. Jesus alone lead me on the right path. In him alone, I receive my worldly blessings. On the trails of the hills and the valleys, grasslands and hills seas, and all walks he holds me firm, that I may walk steadily. He leads me to his heavenly kingdom. When night falls, I retire to bed. He watches over me. In the morning when I awake, I have him a friend. When I falter, he gently corrects me. And whenever I am weary, he restores my strength. This beautiful hymn reminds us and reminds me of Lord as my kinsman redeemer. He is your kinsman redeemer. He is our kinsman redeemer. He could be mine, yours, ours, kinsman redeemer, if he is not already. I was given a prophetic word in my dreams by God at the beginning of the year. God was asking me to share with others that he is and will always be our kinsman redeemer. I felt God was asking us to turn our hearts to him alone for he is our firm foundation, our provider and our shield. God invites us to live a life without being held back by burdens and demands of others and of this world. So we can experience the liberating freedom of untamed God he is, the loving creator and sustainer of all things, for whom nothing is impossible. Just like Ruth did, there is an invitation for us to put ourselves at Jesus' feet. What does that look like? To take a posture of surrender, to submit to God. Jesus is calling you and I to come to the feet of the cross with all that we carry and he will cover us with his cloth, just like Boaz did for Ruth. In response to this message, may I invite you to sign the cross on your forehead. Amen. Now we enter a short time of silent prayer.
Let's end our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will now sing our next hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want. service together. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really do encourage you to check out our website and see what's happening uh, over the, the next few weeks and our brand new newsletter is online as well. As we end our time together, let's finish our service by praying for each other with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.